Good morning, everybody. Time is an illusion, and lunchtime doubly so. Um, one day, I was on Twitter, and I've seen this tweet. Good morning, by Cal Evans. And, uh, well, it was about two in the afternoon for me. So I somehow, somehow realized, no, that something is complicated with time. Um, I also realized that when I was doing some open source contributions to uh, JointIn or php.ug or calling all papers, all of those are somehow related to date and time information. And um, so I asked myself, what is the trouble with time zones? What is the trouble with time? This is the first nail to the coffin called time. It's a nail uh, most Americans know. Um, it's the last symbolic nail that was used to join the Pacific Railway and the um, Atlantic Railway, somewhere in the middle of America, uh, when they built the first transcontinental railway. That was in 1869, as far as I remember, and was a great honor to be there. Uh, they joined those two railway lines, and suddenly they had a problem. Because now trains could travel from San Francisco to New York, throughout the whole of the United States. Uh, that's more than 100 kilometers, that's even more than 1,000 kilometers, and that takes a lot of time. And they had to do timetables along the way. And these timetables always had to be in the local time, because people didn't know, well, when is the train uh, arriving or when is the train leaving? Well, it's at 12 o'clock. Fine, 12 o'clock is when the uh, sun is at its highest point. So I'm going to be there at the station when the sun is at its highest point. But 12 o'clock probably meant 12 o'clock at some other area. So they came to the station and either had to wait for two hours or the train was already gone, which was a pity. And so they decided in, 19, in 1881 to get rid of that problem. And they created time zones. The managers of the railway met in a hotel and had an idea. And they realized it doesn't make sense to have timetables with local time or probably to have timetables with the time from a place somewhere else than at the station. So they decided let's divide the whole line, the whole continent into four different parts. Pacific part, uh, Atlantic part, a central part, and a mountain part. And in all of those areas, at least for the railway, we have one time throughout that whole area. And between those areas, we just use one hour offset between each. So the time might not be exactly 12, I mean, the time 12 o'clock might not be exactly the time the sun was at, it high, at its highest point, but, well, that was mostly half an hour off, so that's okay. And then decided, okay, let's do this. And uh, at one day in, 19, in 1883, they telegraphed the time from, I think, New York, might be somewhere else, along the whole railway line, and at a certain point, at that time, they all set their clocks to the new time. So it might have happened that there are villages that suddenly, in this, at this day, had noon twice. 
And from that point on, we have time zones. Why is all that bother? Why do we have this difference in time anyway? Well, that's mostly because the Earth is around. And the Earth revolves around the Sun. So within 24 hours, every part of the, uh, of the world has Sun and also no Sun. So we have day and night. This is what it looks uh, approximately now. Uh, yeah, well, we're pretty good in there. Um, so Australia is uh, currently dark and, uh, well, most of Asia as well. And Africa and America currently has sun. And as people, we are used to doing our stuff during the daylight. We have a schedule. When the sun gets up, we get up. When the sun is at its highest point, we have lunch. And when the sun goes down, we have dinner. And that's more or less a good thing. But that causes that we have different time zones, so to say, because we have different areas where it is noon at a different time. This is what the time zone map currently looks like. Well, that might be a bit out of date by now, because uh, we come to that later. Um, and one of the things is time zones only specify a certain area in a country. And these areas have an offset, a so-called offset, from a fixed date or from a fixed timeline. This fixed timeline for us is Greenwich Mean Time. Well, most of the time it's actually UTC. We come to that later. Why is that Greenwich Mean Time? Why? Are we using Greenwich Mean Time as our main offset? It's just by chance. We could have used something else. Also, in the 1800s, um, people came together and said, OK, which meridian do we use for our um, geographic alignment? Which should be the meridian we are using for orientation on sea. And there were different ones um, at stake. There was the meridian of Greenwich, there was the meridian of Paris, there was the meridian of uh, somewhere else, I think the uh, Azores. Um, and they just decided, okay, most of us are already using the one of Greenwich, so let's just keep those maps that are tuned for Greenwich. And, well, the French do have to align. <laughs> it was more or less like that. So, as all the maps were aligned to the Greenwich Meridian, time, which was used at that time to find your current position at sea, was also using this meridian as the null meridian. So at 12 o'clock in Greenwich, there was a great red ball that uh, fell down and all the, the captains of the, of the ships could tune their clocks to that time. So that's the reason why we are using an offset, plus or minus, to Greenwich. So what is a time zone, actually? The time zone is that part of the Earth's surface that, by governmental definition, has the same date and time. I highlighted one of those parts, and that's the part that actually makes life really, really difficult. <laughs> Governmental definition. Without that, everything would be pretty easy. <laughs> um, so as I said, most of the time zones are offset from Greenwich Mean Time, from UTC. Let's have a short excursion to time coordinates. What is Greenwich Mean Time? Greenwich Mean Time um, in Greenwich Mean Time, noon depends on the sun. So when the sun is at its highest point, it is 12 o'clock. 
which is pretty okay. But <clears throat> that causes an offset of up to 16 minutes throughout the year. So 12 o'clock might not really be, well, um, 12 o'clock at some other day. Or it might not be 24 hours in between. So at some point, people said, okay, that might be okay for the average user, but for scientific reasons, we need something different. We need to actually have a decent count for a second. Because from, in Greenwich Mean Time, a second might be slightly less or slightly more long than, well, another second. And so they invented uh, the universal time, or temps atomique international, excuse my French, please, um, which actually depends on an atomic clock. So from now on, uh, I don't know how many uh, levels between uh, the upper and the lower level of a cesium atom um, are counted as one second. So from now on, one second is exactly as long as any other second. That's pretty awesome. Um, they started this in 19, uh, 1955, and um, it's completely independent from solar orbit. So we don't have an offset of 16 minutes or, uh, 16 minutes or something like that. Every second is as long as another second. Pretty cool. But... Um, <clears throat> In 2015, we already had 36 seconds offset from Greenwich Mean Time. So, um, well, that might be cool for scientific reasons, but it's not as cool for general users. So, at one point, people decided, okay, let's try something in between, uh, which is UTC, Universal Time Coordinated. The important thing is the coordinated, because it's coordinated with the Greenwich Mean Time. And it's coordinated in such a way that it is mainly based on the uh, atomic clock. And it adds every now and then a leap second. So every now and then, we have a second more than average. And it adds a leap second so that the offset between UTC and Greenwich Mean Time is never more than one second. So, time zones have an offset from Greenwich Mean Time or from UTC. Most of the time zones, or most of the governments actually decided that their time zones are based on UTC. Denmark, for example, is still based on Greenwich Mean Time. Uh, well, no, that, that was based on Greenwich Mean Time because in 1800 whatnot, uh, they decided that it is based on Greenwich Mean Time, and no one cared to change that. So what do, you, what do we have? We have time zones. A time zone is a geographical region that shares the same time. What else do we have? We have time zones abbreviations. So the time zone for here is Europe-Belgrade. Europe-Belgrade covers all of Serbia. It's the geographical region, uh, region that, by governmental definition, has the same time. The time zone abbreviation is, at the moment, uh, CET, uh, CEST, Central European Summertime. Or, in winter, CET, Central European Time. And that's the sum of geographic regions. That's going to be important later. We also have the zone time. The zone time is the offset against whatever your country chooses as basis, UTC or GMT. And that zone time might change. So, it's pretty easy, isn't it? So we have a time zone, and we have an offset, fine. Cool thing. What makes time zones complex? The governmental definition. Because 
These are two maps of Russia. Uh, the Russians, I sometimes have the impression, have fun changing time zones. Because there isn't a year where they don't change any, something. Either it's the name of the time zone, or it's the offset, or they just decide, oh, no, now let's you, uh, take this county and put it in some other time zone. So they just change. And that's one thing. The other thing is, this tiny little dot here. Because the upper one is from 2011, and the lower map is from 2014. And most of you probably remember, there was a big fight around the Crimean, and so the Crimean now belongs, at least time zone-wise, please, this is not a political statement, <laughs> belongs time zone-wise to Russia. Time zones change, and that makes it complex. Um, time zones change for different reasons. They change because, well, they just want to. <laughs> they change because of war. They change because the leaders just want to be different than someone else. Venezuela, for example, just decided at one point, hey, we don't want to be in the same time zones as our neighbors, so just create a new time zone for us with a 30-minute offset. <laughs> or, um, for example, Turkey uh, just last year decided, well, summertime is cool. Let's keep that throughout the whole year. <laughs> and um, Tonga at one point said, ah, it's pretty cool that we have our own time zone of, I don't know, uh, let me think, uh, of uh, minus 13, so minus 13 hours. Um, but we are mostly doing uh, trade with New Zealand and stuff like that, and they are just one day behind us, so that doesn't make really much sense. So let's go from mi minus 13 to plus 14. <laughs> they skipped the whole day. <laughs> and. Um, yeah, well, so there are a lot of, lots of reasons. Um, just uh, at the end of last year, there was a new time, no, at the beginning of this year, there was a new time zone created in Chile, uh, because, well, Chile is a one, one very small stripe uh, down the Atlantic Ocean, uh, the, the, the Pacific Ocean, is it the Pacific? Yeah, Pacific Ocean, and then one stripe uh, over to the Atlantic, and that stripe over to the Atlantic just has a different time. And they just said, no, we don't want to be in this strange time zone which doesn't match us, so let's create an own time zone for us. And they did it. And now nothing is work working. Yeah, now I have a time offset. <laughs> so, let's see, yeah, that makes it easy. And <clears throat> if you think that is complex, no. <laughs> Believe me, that's the easy part. <laughs> because we have summertime. Exactly 101 years of summertime, to be correct, um, which uh, usually is called daylight saving time. I should correct that typo. Um, I know pretty well that is 101 years because, uh, as Germans, we are guilty. In 1916, during the First World War, um, the government decided we need more light. We need more time of the day with light. So just get some extra time during the summer so we can build more bombs. <clears throat> no, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> no, 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 sorry. To save fuel for the tanks. And. Uh, we, cre we started summertime for the first time in history. And, um, well, we haven't been the only ones, so a lot of other people thought, hey, that's a cool idea. Yes, summertime or daylight saving time is always an hour, isn't it? Well, by accident, yes, usually it is. But it might not be, it might not need be. Because also in Germany, in 1946, 
no, yeah, 1946, I think it was. Um, budgets were low, so um, we needed more daylight to build stuff. So they decided, yes, okay, we introduced daylight savings time. And it still wasn't enough, so they said, well, let's introduce another daylight savings time. So we set the clocks in March, plus one hour, and in May, another time, plus one hour. So from May to July, we had an offset of, uh, well, three hours to UTC, while usually in uh, the standard time, we only have one hour. They skipped that pretty fast. I think it was only in 1946. Um, but that's not the only time or the only place where we have strange summertime or daylight saving time issues. Morocco, for example, is another nice thing. They are using daylight saving time from May, uh, from, from uh, March to, I think this year it is June. And on the 18th of June, they go back to standard time for one month and then use daylight saving time again until October. Because from June to July there is Ramadan. And the Muslims are only allowed to eat when it's dark. So if they skip summertime, it gets dark earlier, so problem solved. Yeah. Interesting. Um, so here, for, for, for the area here, you can get the transitions and you see, okay, 26th of uh, March, we had a transition from plus one to an offset of 7,200 seconds, which would then be plus two, I think. And uh, the next offset, or the next one is on 29th of October back. That's pretty easy here. So, daylight savings time might not be one hour offset. It can be any time. It can be any, any amount of minutes at the moment. Uh, it should be seconds, but uh, at the moment I think it's only minutes. And always remember, daylight saving time starts at different times throughout the world. And I'm not only talking about the two weeks difference between Europe and America. I'm also talking about the half year difference between Europe and Australia. Because daylight saving time is at different seasons throughout the, the world. And when you're using daylight savings time, be prepared for days with 23 or 25 hours. So all of you who are doing calculations with dates, by adding uh, 86,400 seconds, that works, usually. So, uh, yeah, and, and it can occur more than once a year, as 1946 in Germany or in Morocco. So, to summarize, time zones are political definitions, which makes it pretty hard. Time zones change, and the question is not, do they change? The question is, when do they change? Time zone abbreviations cover a stripe from north to south, and the zone times are defined by offset from UTC. And daylight savings time may add or remove at any time. The important thing is, daylight saving time does not change the time zone. It changes the zone time. Because you're still in the time zone Euro Belgrade. But your time, the zone time, is different throughout the year. Are you still with me? Okay. <laughs> so let's have a look at what does that mean in PHP? Because we're on a PHP conference here. You all use the date time class. 
And you, all should, you also use the date time zone object. It's pretty easy to instantiate, print our new, time, new date time zone plus 0200, which creates a new time zone of time zone type 1. You can also use new date time zone CEST, Central European, Standard time, uh, Central European Summer Time, uh, which creates a time zone type 2. And you can use Euro Belgrade as a um, parameter for the instantiation, which creates a time zone of type 3. Why is that important? Why are there three different time zone types? Well, we'll see that when we create a time zone object and call its get location prop, uh, method. If we instantiate that with Euro Belgrade and we call get location, we get a country abbreviation, we get a latitude, we get a longitude, and we get some comments. The latitude and longitude are somewhere around here. If we do that with a time zone object of time zone type 2, we get nothing. Why is that? Well, pretty cool. Central European summertime might be anywhere in Central Europe. So no one actually knows where are you. We can't give you a country abbreviation. We can't give you a location. So we don't have this information here. The same with an offset. We don't have that information. That might be somewhere from North Pole to South Pole. OK. So the interesting thing now is time zone information change. As I said that, you should stay current. You can get your current version of the time zone, of your time zone information when you're using PHP-E and pipe that to grab and look for Olson. The time zone database, that central piece of information where all the time zone information is ag aggregated, was called Olson database because, uh, well, of its founder, which uh, was a person named Olson. By now, that's um, maintained by Paul Eggert. You can get that with your current PHP version. As soon as you update your PHP version, which all of us regularly do, we get the new information for the time zone database. If you can't update your PHP version, why ever that might be, you can use uh, the time zone DB package, which um, is pretty good maintained and which always contains the latest time zone information. And of course, you can get the raw code uh, from Ayana. They host the time zone database. Uh, you can also get that from GitHub, from Paul Eggert's GitHub account. So, how do we handle daytimes in PHP? Don't rely on server time. Yes, the server should be on UTC. The main part here is should. Always use date time with time zone information. Or use UTC. Depends on what you're doing. When you're doing log information, use UTC. When you're doing stuff with longer running dates, so not now, not today, but perhaps in three weeks, three years, three decades, always use time zone information. And I personally always try to use daytime immutable. It makes my code much easier to debug. That's the whole thing with immutability. Uh, but that's a different story. So, I'm instantiating a time zone object. Euro Belgrade, and I'm instantiating a daytime object. And I'm telling that, hey, it's 27th of May 2017. Well, at the moment, uh, we're a bit late. It's 17.30, but let's use that. And we also pass the time zone. And by that, we tell the daytime object that we want to have, want this time to be represented in this time zone. So if we format that, we get, yes, it's the 20, 20, 2017, May 27th, 1700, with an offset of plus 2. 
equals plus two, because we are in summertime, everything's fine. If you want to change that or convert that to a different time zone, you just call set time zone, pass it another time zone object, and it magically gets converted to your new time zone. You magically get your new time zone information. Mainly, that is all the magic there is. But be careful. The daytime object can also use daytime strings with the time zone information. If you say daytime immutable A, who of you would have thought that you get something sensible of that, out of that? One? <laughs> okay. That mainly says, create a daytime object of today with a time zone A, because there is a time zone A. There is also time zone B, time zone C, time zone E, and there is even a time zone Z. The only thing there isn't is a time zone J. So if you call daytime immutable, new daytime immutable J, you get a fatal error. Uh, those are the, the military time zones, Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, up to Zulu. And there just is no time zone J. So, how do we store daytimes? No, we don't store daytimes as UTC. You should store daytimes in two fields in the database. One for the actual daytime, for the local daytime, or UTC, depending on what you're doing. When you're doing appointments, use the local date. If you're doing log information, use UTC. And the second field, a string field, which contains the time zone information. And the time zone being Euro-Belgrade, not Central European Standard Time. How does that look like? Yeah, we create a PDO object, we prepare a statement, insert into event values daytime time zone, and then we execute that with, time, uh, with the time zone and with the daytime, and we are lucky. And we can revert that and get a daytime object out of that by selecting the information and passing the daytime information as the first parameter to, uh, to new daytime immutable, and the time zone information is the second parameter. And then we have our daytime object. To do daytime maths in database, especially in MySQL, MySQL needs to know about those time zones. So MySQL actually needs to have the information of the Olsen database. You should have a look whether that is the case. If you use this command, you tell MySQL here, use these zone information and pass that into my MySQL database to update the, zone, the, the uh, time zone information with the current information should actually be executed when you install the MySQL database. It is not always executed. Postgres always uses, or normally uses, the uh, server-side installed time zone information. So make sure you have the correct time zone data, the current time zone data. And then you can do such funny things like this one, because, hey, usually it's, I want to compare my dates, but now I have different time zone information in my database. How can I compare them? Well, that's how. You use convert TZ. You convert the time zone on the fly. You use your, database, your, your daytime field. And you tell it, hey, convert it from my time zone, which is the time zone field associated with that, time, with that daytime, and convert it to UTC. So when we are converting to UTC, why shouldn't we store it in UTC first? 
because the daytime information, the time zone information changes. When you convert the time zone, the daytime information into UTC at the point of saving, you might convert a date in five years' time into UTC with your current time zone information, which might be a different information than in five years' time. Sorry? Isn't the database historical so that it doesn't do that? Well, if, if you convert it to UTC now and store it in UTC, you're losing that information. I'm pretty happy to discuss that later on because that's really a philosophical question. <laughs> For PostgreSQL, um, it's pretty easy. PostgreSQL is awesome. PostgreSQL even has a field or, or date, uh, t data type timestamp with time zone. Please don't use that because it's not a time zone, it's an offset they are using which has the same problem because we, are, we might convert something to an offset that might not be existent at the time that date actually is happening. Also, perfectly happy to discuss that later. Uh, in Post but in Postgres you can also use this um, conversion, this on-the-fly conversion, um, it's just a different, uh, uh, different function here. Um, you say, give me the hour from the time at time zone zone, and then at time zone UTC. Looks a bit strange, but it works. So, we've handled how PHP handles time zones, how MySQL, how Postgres handles time zones. Fine. Um, what is missing? How do we get user time zones? Is there a reliable way to get a user's time zone? No. Sorry. It's about as reliable as getting the user's IP address, or as getting the user's location from the IP address. Um, it doesn't really work. Oh, uh, wait, there, there is a, probably a thing. Um, this is moment.js. And in moment, with moment.js, you can do something like this. Let's have a look what happens when I click on Guess My Time Zone. Uh, yes, and I should click onto the right one. Yeah, it, it guesses the time zone. Yes, and I, I'm living in Europe, Berlin, so my browser is in German, and so yeah, that. But it might not necessarily work, as you see. So there is not really a reliable way to do that. Okay, um, I'm obviously living in the right time zone at the moment. <laughs> um, now, how do we get time zones for a country? Um, the date time zone object has a lot of useful information that we can use to get pretty awesome data. We can use um, a thing like list identifiers. Give me all the identifiers that are existing for a country. Um, I tried that with... Um, Belgrade, uh, with uh, Serbia, which wasn't that impressive because, yeah, well, there was one time zone, which was Europe-Belgrade. Um, I could have done that with America, which would uh, give you a whole bunch of time zones. But I did that with Germany. And most of the Germans don't even know we have two time zones in Germany. Who of you knows Büsingen? Where is Jordi? You, you could know it. That's a, that's a very small enclave uh, of Germany within, the, within Switzerland. And they are using, uh, well, um, there are mostly Swiss people living in there. And they are right in the near of uh, Schaffhausen. Uh, so all, all they are doing, the business and stuff like that, is with the, uh, with the Swiss. And um, Switzerland had a time where they didn't have summertime or daylight saving time. So the people from Büsing in some t at one time said, hey, People from Berlin, it's pretty good that you are using daylight saving time. We are mostly doing our stuff with the Swiss, so piss off. <laughs> we are doing our own th uh, stuff. Time zones change. By now they also use summertime, so um, 
but we still have two time zones. The most important thing is how can we get a time zone for a location? Getting a time zone for a user is pretty, well, messy, but getting a time zone for a location is actually possible. I have a location, and this location is somewhere located within a time zone. Um, there are shape files around you can use if you know how to handle shape files and how to do the uh, geographical information start, uh, data and handling and stuff like that. But you also can use an API. There are different APIs around. Uh, this is one of them, and you just pass it latitude and a longitude and tell it what format you want, and then you get this information. Awesome. I have times. Uh, I have 44.8333 and longitude of 20.5, which results to more or less here. I will get an abbreviation. Yeah, we're currently on Central European summertime. We are in uh, Serbia, and uh, yes, we have daylight savings time. We have an offset to GMT of 3,600, usually. And uh, the current timestamp is this. Well, no, not really. It wasn't at the time I did that. And the uh, time zone is Europe Belgrade. So here we know, OK. Euro Belgrade is a time zone for this location. So if you have the possibility to get the location of your user because you want to send them something and they give you the address, then you can go do a reverse lookup and get the geographic location and then you can also get their time zone. Pretty nifty. Okay, so we have the time zone. I told you before, having the time zone abbreviation, CEST, doesn't give you information, doesn't give us information about location. Because this is the reason. We can get the, the information for the abbreviation Central European Summertime. And we get a list, an array of 51 entries. And so it's 51 time zones that all have the abbreviation Central European Summertime. When I do the same thing for Central European time, I even get 52. I have no idea which time zone is not observing stand, uh, summertime here. Are you with me so far? Good. I'm coming to an end. Don't. Don't try to get a time zone from an offset or from a time zone abbreviation, because it doesn't work. We've just seen it. You have a list of 51 or 52 different time zones for one abbreviation. <coughs> please, please, don't do funny time uh, timestamp arithmetics within the database or within your PHP code. Adding 68,400 seconds doesn't make it plus one day. It's a difference either because of summertime, because you suddenly have, well, 23 or 24, uh, 25 hours, or because of uh, leap seconds that are inserted suddenly. Don't store the offset of a daytime in the database, because you lose information. If you have the time zone, store the time zone, not the offset. And don't rely on time zone functions of your database or of a database. This is a bit of a, well, the thing is time zone functions might not be available. If you know my code will run on MySQL and it will run on MySQL forever, use that, perfect. If you know it will run on Postgres, use that. But if you are writing code that might run on any database, Try to avoid it. Try to, use it, to do it within PHP code. Because some funny user think, might think it is a good idea to run my application with a SQLite backend, and there are no time, time information there. And please don't convert a time zone to UTC. At least not a, a date time information 
that is more than, let's say, three weeks in the future, because it might change. So, use UTC for logging information, because that's perfect. The, the, it's currently happening, so I have my UTC timestamp, and I can convert my, date, my, my local time to UTC with the currently available information. Do it for logging information. If it's not about logging information, store the date without the offset as local time, and also store the time zone name in the database right beneath it. Of course, yes, you can omit the time zone name for UTC. Use Moment.js for rendering, especially if you're using some JavaScript templating stuff thingy. Use Moment.js. Otherwise, well, use whatever you want. And in the end, a daytime is a value object. A daytime without a time zone is a bit like currency without money. It doesn't change that frequently as money, but it changes. Please leave feedback on joined in. Are there any questions? Apart from the philosophical ones. <laughs> okay, uh, so uh, I didn't quite get the daytime zone, uh, the daytime and daytime zone objects in PHP. They rely on the awesome uh, database, right? Or not? Well, you, you uh, actually, actually, where where did the daytime zone? object in PHP knows the time zones that are currently existing. Uh, the, date time, the date time zone object yeah, yeah. uses the information that is stored in well, the, the, the time zone DB database within the PHP source code. Okay, so the, the, the database is in the PHP the, source code. The database is in the PHP source code and when you regularly update your PHP, you always get the latest information on that database. If you can't update PHP regularly, you should at least use the uh, Peckle package to update the time zone information. Because otherwise you are, well, you might suddenly be converting your time zone information with information from three years ago, which isn't that cool. Okay, so basically with every update with uh, PHP, we can rely on that we get the current Yes. Daytime zone yes. information that exists. Yes. And uh, okay, the, the other question that I have is, I don't know if it's answerable. Anyway, uh, what is the chance that we'll get a time zone or a change or a new time zone, new new stuff going on in the world? Uh, well, how, how to formulate it? How how much how much time can we expect that will pass between a PHP update? And, and something going on in, in the time zone world. Um, so for example, can, can, do, we, do, we, do we get an update of PHP when there is a new time zone, for example? Just solely because of that. It, it might, of course it might happen. Of course it might happen. The, the time zone database isn't synchronized to the PHP release cycle, sadly. Yeah. Um, but, so it might happen that uh, Derek just compiled a new uh, version and uh, we just released a new PHP version. Everything is fine, and two days later we get new information for the time zone database. That might happen. But usually, the, time, the, the informations that go into the time zone database aren't, um, aren't activated right now. They have a few weeks in advance, usually. Government procedures. So, uh, when they are in the time zone database, and the, the PHP release was done, chances are very, very, very low that you're missing something. Okay. It might happen, but hey. And one of the things was, um, I, I'm on the mailing list, and uh, at one point in the mailing list, 
uh, there was a notice, uh, the notice. Oh, uh, by the way, um, we just heard that our station, uh, our scientific station in the Antarctic, um, changed from offset plus two to minus three 14 days ago. Well, okay, thank you very much. We put that into the next cycle. Um, hey. <laughs> On the Antarctic. <laughs> Thanks. Anyone else? Oh, damn. So the question is going to be a bit complicated. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> complicated subject. Uh, the time zone may change. Yes. No, it will change. It will change. So uh, <laughs> two countries might have the same time zone at one moment. No. Because the time zone is always by governmental decision. So two countries can't share one time zone. Okay, so imagine we have, uh, let's say, Serbia and Croatia having the same time now. Yes. If I'm computing the difference of now in Serbia and now in Croatia, I should have zero. Yes. If I'm doing this computation in, let's say, 100 years and the time zone is not the same anymore. Yes. And I'm computing with the date of today, am I going to have a zero? Yes. Because the time zone information, the historical time zone information, is preserved. Uh, the, the, the time zone database tries to cover the time from the 1st of January 1970 to now, well, and to future. So it will increase the information. And they are even trying to get the right information for the, uh, for the time before the 1st of January 1970. That might not be 100% correct. Um, there have been uh, changes in that one because they suddenly realized, oh no, that was a wrong information we put, there, uh, put in there. But the information we have now will always be the same. There will only be information added. There will no information be removed. So the information, if, if in 100 years time, you're calculating the difference between times here and in wherever else, will be the same as when you calculate them now. Okay, so it means that if I'm computing the difference between two dates in the past, I'm always going to have the same number. But if I'm doing as with, long between as dates in the future, I might have a difference. You certainly will have a difference. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> and th the difference will increase the further you go into the future. Anyone else? There was someone? Hello. Um, regarding the updates we get for time zones, yes. uh, we do get those, not as often as we'd like. Um, we do also know when there is a leap year, but how do we know when there is a leap second? Um, Leap seconds are announced with at least a quarter of a year in advance. Um, so they are already in the time zone database information. <coughs> also, leap seconds are a bit of a nasty thing because um, the time zone, as far as I remember, on most system rely, uh, systems relies on the Unix timestamp. And the Unix timestamp doesn't have leap seconds. Because they have, there is a, there is a, a rule how leap seconds are handled within the, uh, time, uh, the timestamp. Um, the second is just rewinded and then done again. Uh, so, well, but the, the information about leap seconds is in the time zone database and it is well in advance in the time zone database. So when you're doing your regular upgrades, you have the information. Thank you. Anyone else? No more questions about time zones? Yeah, there was, there was a... <laughs> uh. 
that's because of the colleague and you talking about <laughs> Unix timestamp. As far as I know, Unix timestamp is the definition, the definition for Unix timestamp is the number of seconds that have passed since uh, whatever date it was. First of January, 1970. Yeah. The 1970, yeah. And uh, it doesn't deal with time zones and stuff, right? It just the number of seconds, no matter their leap, no matter their leap years, leap seconds, whatever, it's just the number of seconds, like, like a counter, right? Yes. Uh, That's yes. how it works. Okay, cool. In UTC. So that, that is the thing. Uh, when, when you initialize um, a daytime object, when you instantiate a daytime object with a timestamp, with an at symbol before uh, any num numeric string or numeric number, um, it will always set the time zone to UTC. Because that's the definition of a timestamp. It's in UTC. So, when there are no more questions. Uh, There's one. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> what the hell?